Hey everyone, I'm Terry G. Thanks a lot for stopping by and watching my video. If you can take a second, can you please smash that subscribe button? I'd really appreciate it. What I wanna talk about today is I wanna talk about one of the steps that puts so much fear into me to do. And that step is, it was step nine. And the step reads like this. Make direct amends to such people whenever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. And you know, that step was very, very difficult for me. Going back in my past and making amends to harms that I did to other people. So I'm gonna share in this video how it went for me in the exact way I did it, okay? So let's get to it. Before I get started into the step nine, I just wanna make sure that you have your step eight done. And I did a video, I don't know, about six months ago about step eight and how I made three columns of people that I'd make amends to right away that were in my neighborhood sort of thing and in my city. People I had to wait for, another list, and people I'd never make amends to. And I hope you have a list like that because if you're at step nine, you need a list because you need to make sure who you, you know who you're gonna make those amends to. So first of all, I just wanna say, the reason we're doing step nine is to complete the cycle. The alcoholism, the abuse was done. The harms were done. And by making amends, it kind of completes the circle. We don't have to think about that thing anymore, feel guilty about it, or carry that shame that those acts or behaviors created within us. Because I feel a lot of things that when I drank, what people did to me, and this is only my opinion, what people did to me didn't affect me as much Okay, it did affect me, don't get me wrong. But the things I did to other people, it went against my moral compass, the things I did to other people, like stealing from my mother, abusing my girlfriends, letting my bosses down when I really tried my best to go to work because I was too hungover. All those sort of things that I did to other people, knowing that they're wrong to do. One of the first amends I did was a guy, his name was Danny, and we, we, we looted a car, we smashed the shit out of a car. To make a long story short, he paid the, the, the monetary damage to that car, it was $1,800, and I was 18 years old, believe it or not, and I always thought about that, that I owe him that money. And that was a monetary amends, and I went to his door with a pile of checks to pay him back. I was gonna make pay payments, for half of the $1,800 was his $900 and give him the money. To make a long story short, when he talked to me, he said to me, Terry, I thought you were dying. And we kind of laughed and I kind of cried because I was very, very humbled at that time. And I was going to, I gave him the checks. And he said, Terry, you don't owe me any money. And that amends went very, very well. And not saying all amends will go well, but the main thing about the amends is that it's for us to correct our side of the street. What they do with it is their business. It's about being humble. It's about humility for us to, to fix the past, to make us okay with us, okay? To, to make me feel okay about things that I did. Most amends that I did to my family, to the bank, to people that I was, you know, women that I used because of, uh, for sex and all that kind of stuff, things went pretty well. A lot of the things that I was thinking about in my head and how I exaggerated these experiences over the years, and when I went up and talked to these people, it didn't seem to them as bad as it felt to me. And that was one of the biggest things I got out of it, that these resentments or these harms that we did to other people, you know, we carry this stuff over many, many years or months or whatever it may be. For me, it was decades. And by the time we make that amends, these problems or these events have been so exaggerated. When we go and talk to these people, some of them say to me, nothing happened, Terry, nothing. And some of them say, yeah, you did that. I accept your apology. I'm glad that you were, came here to apologize to me. People are usually overwhelmed with joy and they really accept what's going on. There's a part in the step that says, when to harm them or others. That's when we don't make the amends. So if for myself, I was in a very abusive relationship, I, I abused my 
ex-wife. She never wanted to talk to me. I don't think making amends to her would be appropriate, like finding her in a coffee shop or calling her up. So I created a lot of harm to her. So for me to make an amends, when I was talking to my sponsor, would harm her, would create you know, a fear in her probably. I don't, I don't really know, I'm just telling you this, but we decided for me to not to do that. But also to harm myself. Like I stole from stores to feed myself. I did things that I'm not proud of, illegal stuff. I'm not gonna go and confess my crimes to the police. I'm not, I'm not gonna do that for stealing a loaf of bread or stealing a bunch of chocolate bars or things, things like that when I was living on the street. I'm not gonna do that. So what I'm gonna do, what my sponsor and I suggested I do, just give a little money to the poor people, homeless people, maybe give a little bit more money in the seventh tradition of Alcoholics Anonymous, just sort of make an amends like that, okay? Because we are trying to correct our wrongs. We're not trying to punish ourselves to death I know some people say, go and you know tell the police exactly what you did and all this kind of things. And I don't know if I agree with that or disagree with that. I never did it. I just made financial amends or I volunteer at a food bank. That's the way I did those amends, okay? The ones that I felt or my sponsor and I felt that it would harm me. Another one is, is that the ones, the, the amends that you can't make, the people who have died, they live too far away or you don't know where they live or you have no contact with them whatsoever. The ones who have died, you can very, very simply write a letter and if you know where they're buried, you can go to their grave site and just read the letter to them or you can read it to someone else, those letters. And that's what I did. I wrote about five or six letters out to people I didn't know where they were, that I caused harm to, that I owe amends to. I wrote these letters out, people who have died, etc., and I read them to members of Alcoholics Anonymous. And that worked for me. That created, it, it, it finished that cycle. You know, the harm's done, I've renewed my life, and I need to correct my past. And that is the, the essence of step nine for me, is to complete the cycle. Stop the shame, stop the guilt, and take responsibility for the things that I have done. Say to the world, I am getting sober, sober, I am getting better. And because of this, I'm gonna correct my past. And what it does is when we apologize or make the amends to the people, places and things that we've done harm to, we're able to leave the past exactly where it is, in the past, in the gifts from doing step nine are crazy. I felt like I was walking on, on cloud nine. I felt I was floating. The emotional and spiritual high that I received from doing step nine was astronomical. It was fantastic. I felt relieved for once in my life, I could leave that guilt and that shame in that thinking behind in a, in a really constructive way. Step nine, there's so many gifts that come out of it, but the biggest gift that comes out of it is that it will prove to you that the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous really, really work, and it sets us on a different plane. It just says, hello, we are one with mankind, we are back, we are doing our best, and you know we can do it sober one day at a time. There's a lot of benefits from step nine, a lot of people don't do it because it takes a lot of courage, but you know, it's ongoing and it's, it's, but you know, it's really, really beneficial to you. One last thing, I mentioned it just a second ago, step nine can be ongoing. I've met people many years after about being in, in, being in sobriety and I've made amends to those people as they come along. The amends can take 10 years, it can take six months, it can take 10 days, but you'll come, You'll constantly see people you feel that you need to make an amends to. You can make those amends as you move along, okay? Maybe that's in the step in the third list, the people we can't make amends to. Maybe you've run into them on the street. Being sober is a great life. It takes work, it takes, it takes determination, it takes courage, but the payoff is astronomical because the way the payoff is that we get to know ourselves and we feel comfortable in our own skin, okay? 
I hope that kind of rounds it up. I just shared some of my experiences with the step nine. I've done it and I continue to do a step nine if I run into people and I've never missed one of the steps. I've always did the steps no matter what. And I suggest no matter what for you, do those steps. We can ride on a few steps and think that we have the program, but we constantly will think or feel that guilt and shame because we haven't corrected the past, okay? So thanks a lot for stopping by. My name is Terry G. This is an alcohol-free life channel where we learn to live sober one day at a time. If you like my video, hit that subscribe button or leave a comment below. But can you please smash the like button? Thanks a lot for stopping by. Ciao for now. It's fall here. Well, just, the, yeah, it is fall now. And I'm, back, I'm up at my cottage. What a beautiful view. I'll talk to you later. See you next week. Ciao for now.